Howdy, it's Mr. Pete again, your internet shop teacher, continuing with my series on making dividing head plates. This is number six in the series, and it's tips number 625, making dividing head plates by an alternate method. Be sure and watch the first five if you have not already done so. I am fully aware that some of you do not have a whole lot of resources in your shop. That is, you don't have a rotary table, you don't have a dividing head, maybe you do not have a digital readout, but yet you need to make some dividing plates. So let's talk about some uh, cheap and easy methods that uh, anybody can do in their shop. Now, they may not be as accurate as what we have been doing, but they'll be plenty accurate for the purposes of uh, what you probably have to do in your shop. And remember, if it's a 40 to 1 dividing head that you're using, the, any minor errors are diluted by the 40 to 1 ratio. To my knowledge, all craftsmen and atlas lathes have a built-in indexing system on the bowl gear. Let's take a look at that. Here's a close-up of the bowl gear with the guard removed and you can see that there are 60 holes. So you can divide uh, any number that can be divided uh, into 60 easily and there is a pin, you can't see it right back here, that goes in to these uh, little holes. Okay, I put reposition the camera and I put on a smaller chuck so that you can see that the indexing pin is on the far side of the headstock where the older model of Atlas lays, it was on the front side right here. Be sure and unplug your machine when you're working under here. But on the older ones, the indexing pin is right here. Again, there are 60 holes. Let's do a real quick job here. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'm showing a short segment here on how to do indexing on a lathe, and that was to be reserved for later videos, but uh, maybe I'll rerun some of this uh, video. But what I've done here is to put uh, one of the discs, and think of this as a whole circle or bolt circle, as well as an index plate. But uh, I want to drill in there with a center drill. I've got a little center drill in the end of the Craftsman grinder held in uh, the appropriate fixture here that came with the Craftsman. Perhaps you do not have one, but you can just bear with me. Now this thing runs at 25,000 RPM insanely fast. So I am going to use it with my Dremel speed control and we'll see if it works at a slower speed or if it has any power. It may or may not. That's a, a center drill that I had to cut off to length and it's quarter inch diameter shank. I forgot what number it is. As said before, there are 60 holes here and I think I'll drill five holes. Matter of fact, I know I will. And I've already highlighted the pinholes every 12 holes, which will give me five holes. And I highlighted them with a marquee. What would uh, marquee? Sharpie. What did we do before we had markies? So I'll put the indexing pin in uh, every fifth hole and attempt to drill it in my setup here and I'll just be moving the carriage back and forth with the carriage hand wheel and using this as if it was a drill press. We'll see if I can do that without breaking the tip off or burning the tip off of that center drill. Perhaps you're able to see that I drew with the dividers uh, several concentric circles here in about the same dimension as what I have been doing all along and I'm going to be drilling on the inner circle like that and I've already lined it up using the cross slide Not quite enough power, but I think I can make at least a little pilot hole that I can re-drill later on. And here's hole two.
at hole five. Okay, there's five equally spaced holes. You know, when I set it up there, I'm a little bit off the circle, so I have some inaccuracy there. If it truly had to be right on the circle, you can see they're all just a little bit inboard. Let me go over to the drill press and re-drill those. Well, it doesn't really matter what the size is, because this was strictly a pilot, and the drill, of course, was running way too fast. You, I think you could tell that in the video. But that is as slow as I could run it before it would stall. Okay, there's the five holes drilled all the way through. Again, I'm off of the whole circle a little bit. You know, when I'm filming this, I know this isn't a lame excuse, but, you know, I've got the camera in the way, and I've got the light in the way, and, and, uh, and I'm in a hurry, and I'm doing three things at once, so, you know, I'm a little embarrassed about that. But let's put this back onto the lathe using that little arbor, and I'll see if I can scribe some circles not circles, but uh, some points on the other circles. And yes, I'm fully aware of what I am doing. I changed the setup now. I've got a scriber spring-loaded in the Alora's tool post, and I have set, or I should say marked, the whole uh, indexing plate back here every six holes. So in other words, I'm going to scribe ten which would be easy to do many other ways, but I'm just trying to show you a way of using this. And since it's 60 holes, I don't have a whole lot of uh, flexibility for odd numbers of holes. But I'm going to bring this up against the work toward that outer circle that's already laid on there, and just feed out with the cross feed and make a little scribe mark. So a scribe mark that can be later center punched and drilled, but presumably pretty accurate. Okay, scribe one. And there they are, ten scribed marks on the circle. They would have to be center punched and drilled with great accuracy, of course, to make it uh, work on a dividing head, but that's another way of laying out holes or lines on a circle with an atlas lathe or craftsman. Quite often you'll be laying out circles and you only need really one circular roll, like what we got here, rather than so many like this. Another way is to take a gear. Most of us have a whole pile of gears or sprockets or saw blades or something else in our uh, junk pile that is already <laughs> has already been indexed quite accurately. So taking a gear, but of course you got to find one with the correct number of teeth. For instance, that's what uh, is that 53 or 55, but whatever. And you need to make a plug or a device, you know, to, to center it on your lathe. And once you have it centered, using a transfer punch of a, the approximate size that would fit into the teeth, something, something like that, you could very carefully go around and transfer one after another until you have however many holes that you need and of course you could uh, go every other tooth if necessary whatever your number is but it always it is hard to find something that is the right number of teeth to do that but again just a suggestion I'm thinking of uh, various ways of doing it ideas you probably have some that are far better put them in the comments using your machinist protractor on your combination square now don't use a magic marker but use a scriber you can divide a circle probably pretty accurately a circular protractor that you can buy at the five and dime it would be very useful 
but you need to work with good light and you need to work accurately and the larger the circle is the more accurately you can work. Perhaps work on a 12 or 14 inch circle and then draw, move your lines back in and I think that reduces the error. Now go on to Google and type in Google images or images of a 360 degree protractor or circular protractor and you can print many of these out in different sizes and with different graduations and glue it. Several people have made suggestions to me and thank you for that. Glue that right onto your plate make marks, uh, center punch right through the paper and do your drilling and sawing right through the paper and that would be fairly effective and fairly accurate. There are several programs that you can find on the internet that will allow you to print out the whole circles that you want with different number of holes, different diameters, and I'm going to go onto the computer right now and show you one of those programs and it's free so check it out. Also I would appreciate it if you viewers out there have any good ideas put that in the comments and then other viewers can look at that and uh, get hints and ideas as to how they might do this because the ideas really are almost infinite and up to your own uh, imagination but you can do a lot with what is available on the internet Here are some of the protractors online that you can print out. And you can reduce or enlarge them on your printer. This is the website called blocklayer.com. I believe it's out of Australia. But here are all the different circles and so on that you can look up and resize for instance there's one and you can change the diameter right here and the number of divisions just all kinds of different things print it out and paste it right on your steel it was Anthony Rudy or Ruddy I'm not sure how you pronounce it down there in Australia that gave me the link to block layer and told me about it along with a long interesting letter so I did print out one with 30 divisions and let's see how to use that. Here is a paper circle with 30 divisions and you can make any number of divisions that you want. And this was printed out in 5 inch diameter, actual size. I'm sure it's pretty accurate, as accurate as my laser printer is. And uh, you can see the center and you could choose any one of these circles and there are the diameters or radii, I forgot what they are I guess the radius and choose like I say any one you wanted and glue this onto a piece of steel center punch or drill right through this and you would have a fairly accurate plate depending on how accurately you could work. So there's a piece of 316 steel and you could start with one that's already uh, turned and is round but I'm just putting this on a regular plate of steel and I think possibly use glue that you spray on so it wouldn't wrinkle and then just glue the pattern that we printed out from block layer right on to that and then proceed to center punch and drill and there you go and saw it out round if you needed to or you could just leave it square so that's just another suggestion and thank you to Anthony down under for this information just a few minutes ago a man sent me an email and he said did you ever read Dave Gingrey's number six book on dividing heads and you know these are Lindsay reprints and this is written and illustrated by Dave Gingrey and he had a whole series of these books but this particular one and it's about three-eighths thick is devoted to the dividing head and deluxe accessories including the plates so get a copy of this book over the internet I think they're still available and 
he tells how to make plates. I was not aware of that until just a few minutes ago, even though I had this on my bookshelf for a year or two, and I guess I had never opened it, and I have several other uh, of the numbers here as well, but I don't have the complete set. They did come from an auction, but they are brand new. So in the book, Dave talks about drilling the plates. However, he uses the dividing head that he has already made as a, a system of indexing it to drill the holes, much as I used the dividing head in a previous video for the same purpose. But a rather interesting book. Check it out. If you go back to tips number 621, where I use the transfer punch method of... Uh, transferring the holes from an existing plate onto a blank. Several people in uh, the comments said, well, you fool, why are you doing it that way? Why don't you just directly, you know, forget about this and drill directly through. These, of course, would be clamped together so it couldn't move. And you certainly could do that. I was hesitant to suggest that because there is a very real possibility of your wallowing out some of these holes and if you had borrowed this plate from someone and did damage to it I would feel uh, real bad for myself and him. But that is a suggestion to, to just clamp them together and drill the holes right on through with a number drill bit or whatever it gave you a real good fit. And one thing I wanted to point out is that you do not necessarily have to make your plates out of steel. They can be made out of uh, even a heavyweight cardboard, like off the back of a tablet. Something that's semi-durable, not corrugated cardboard. It can be aluminum plate, probably something of the correct thickness, or you might have to adapt it. PVC is great. This is a little bit too thick. But 8th inch or 3 16 PVC is just wonderful to work with. And this is acrylic. So just pointing out that it doesn't have to be steel, especially if it's something you're going to only use once for a special job. You don't have to worry about wearing or the holes getting out around, elongating, or, or changing size on you. Here are some suggestions from a viewer. Well, that concludes this video on alternate ways of making dividing head plates for your shop out of different materials as well. Be sure and put comments below in the video that other people might be able to use as far as websites and other related information to this topic. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. See you next time.